Oh, and he's locked in, but what a goal! Inundated. So popular here. Welcome back to the Olympic trials uh, for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Uh, we're here with the second last round of the men's uh, round robin. Uh, I'm joined here with, by William Hensel, uh, obviously Australian great and former Olympian. Uh, nice to have you, William. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, what's your thoughts on this matchup in front of us? Obviously, the, probably the two heavyweights of uh, uh, the male table tennis game in Australia between uh, Heming Hugh and Chris Yan. Yeah, look, both players know that this is a must-win match and. This is going to be nitty-gritty table tennis, I think. Both players will be feeling the pressure. They'll be feeling the ball pretty well after two days of going at it hard. But this is one of the most high-pressure matches of their careers right here. Yeah, absolutely. Any insights of uh, any early tactics that either, either player might use here? It's, it's really tricky to say. I mean, Hemming has, has really picked up his game the last couple of years. He's a big, powerful player. I think, for, importantly for him, he must be moving the ball around a lot. Chris is very safe, consistent, hard-working player when it comes to where the ball, where he's expecting the ball. Every shot Hemming hits will need to have a degree of variation in it. Either moving it even 10, 15 centimetres each time, changing the spin, changing the speed. If he lets Chris find his rhythm, Chris is going to be very difficult to beat. I completely agree, William. That's a, that's a good um, pattern of play by, by Who. Drawing Chris in short to the forehand with his backhand flick and then putting him wide out to his backhand. A similar opportunity there again. Just didn't execute the backhand flick. Uh, I think we've, we, we've discussed a little bit about uh, Hemming serve. I think he he, he he trusts that tomahawk serve in the, in the crucial moments at the moment. And I, and I know you've you've had some uh, thoughts on that over over the weekend. Yeah, look, Hemming falls into the same trap that I fell into during my playing days with that serve of becoming overly reliant on it, of always going, that being the go-to serve in the tight periods of the match. I think Hemming's got more good options on his serve. He's got a good pendulum serve, he's got a good reverse serve, he's got a good tomahawk serve. It's, it's a, a mental battle for him to force himself to vary. And what I don't like seeing from Hemming is exactly what happened there. He put 60% intensity into that serve. He's just trying to place it to not mess it up rather than taking the initiative with the serve. Yeah, he's not looking for that opportunity off a serve, rather just being safe. Yeah, it's a matchup that didn't happen at the national championships this year. Obviously, uh, Chris lost the, at an earlier stage, but I, I, I feel that up up until that national say, Chris Chris probably had the the balance over Heming, winning a couple of national finals against him over the last couple of years. Yeah, I've often found that Chris is a very solid reliable, predictable performer against the best players in the big matches. But he's also, his level can seesaw up and down, so we've seen him lose a couple of matches early on to the lower ranked guys, which also isn't a surprise. We've seen that happening more and more the last couple of years from Chris. But they mean nothing when it comes to this match here. Chris has fought very hard to get himself back into contention. Excellent by Chris there, just ho ho holding holding the ball on the table from the attacks from Hemming, and then and then getting a little kick counter loop wide to the forehand. Yeah, 
there we have it. Uh, Christian takes the first game, 11-3. We'll be back after a short break. As we come back here, who just getting a little bit extra advice from his coach, Russell Laval, before he comes back out. Uh, Chris almost really just wants to get this set underway again and follow on from where he, where he left off, winning 11-3 in the last set. Very impressive there from Chris uh, William. That's a great start to this match, and there wasn't a whole lot that Hemming did wrong, that's it. As Chris was predicting the ball, reading the play very well. Even when Hemming was varying his placement, varying his quality of his shots, Chris predicted it and was there. Nice forehand pivot there from Hu off the serve, um, deep into the forehand of Chris Yan. Bit of luck from Hu, clipping the net, unreturnable from Yan, and Hu gets a good start in this second set and even though it did clip the top of the net it was a good positive engaging short push by Hemi he didn't back away and just try to place it he went after it put a bit of zing on it yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see how Chris Chris fares in this set I, I've been a bit critical of him in some matches uh, throughout this tournament where he's kind of lost concentration and not kept the same intensity and I, I, I would see that that would be a big challenge for Chris throughout this match. As I mentioned before, I, I've seen relatively few poor performances against the top players from Chris. Like his, generally his, his level is good and predictable and consistent against the other top guys. Yeah, and I suppose that's why we see him coming back into the tournament when he has played all those top guys in succession. Coming out now into the into the second last round, he he, he has beaten like Dave Powell, who 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 was undefeated before he came up against Chris. So yeah, completely agree with your comments there, William. Good placement into the pocket there by Hemming. Absolutely, I think we've seen that a bit with Chris uh, in his match against Xavier. Xavier was trying to just get it that couple of centimetres from the middle into the backhand, making Chris kind of make that lean, lean forehand, and it's less comfortable for Chris. Again, a little bit of a, uh, a placement change from Hemming going a little bit more to the middle forehand and brought brought the error out of Jan. Early celebration there from Hemming. He, he was anxious to win that point, but Jan was, was at it. Yeah, Hemming did everything right except win that point. It's good placement. Oh, it's a very good flick from Chris. That stayed low. Side spin, top spin, really dipped down, stayed low for Hemming. 
I almost feel it's it's more important to play low and spinny rather than fast off those flicks at times. It's really difficult balls to play against. Yes, agree. Yeah. This is crunch time for Hemming. Facing a 0-2 deficit would be a tall last for him to come back from. Super counter top spin from Chris there. Very fast, deep in his forehand. I do almost feel like Hemming is not preparing himself to play two, three, four, five quality balls each rally. That first spin up, not enough to win the point. He has to be ready to play two or three more. That's the quality that Chris Yan brings to the table. He's just looking very fast here, William, isn't he? He's making yeah. the small steps to get in and play half longs, and he's just the aggressor at all times here throughout this second set. It's clear he turned up today with one goal, and that was to make the Olympic team. I just find that he has that so much quality on his, on his, on his first open up. Very difficult for who to control. And there we have it, 11-6 for Chris Yan, and he takes a commanding lead. We'll be back after the break with some roundup from the other matches. Welcome back here to this third uh, set between Heming Hugh and Chris Yan. Chris in a commanding lead. If we just go around the table, some some big matches going on elsewhere. If we go directly to table two, where where uh, there's that massive match for Dave Powell. He's he's down 1-0, uh, but he's locked at 3-3 in that second set. An important match for Dave. Uh, if we also look to to Xavier Dixon on table three, another another man in contention for qualification. He's currently 1-0 down against uh, uh, Nick Lum, who, of course, have had a great tournament so far, and they're locked uh, at 4-4 in that, in that uh, second set. Um, the, the, the two guys down on table, five, Finn Liu and Dominic Wang, both kind of reviving their tournament, both on three wins uh, and four losses. Uh, currently, Finn Liu in control there, 1-0, 8-4. Uh, as we go back to the, to the main event, and Chris Yan and Hemming Hugh, that was a good serve, a good first topspin by Hemming. Chris is there. Reading the play exceptionally well. We have had a question. Memdu Keskin, how many players can qualify for the Olympic team? So the top two will go through here and represent Australia at the singles in Tokyo. That's right, Murph. Absolutely, yeah. And the, the, the third team spot and potentially a, a mixed double spot will go to a third player. Uh, the first chance for, for a player to, 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 to gain that place will be at the Oceania Olympic mixed doubles qualification uh, the 19th and 20th of April. So should you not qualify here, there's, there's, there's still that small chance that you can get into the team. Chris is just carrying on where he left off. Reading the ball, he's playing very high quality table tennis. A good flick by Hemming, but he was there. If you, if, if, if you are Hemming Hugh or in the Hemming Hugh corner here, William, what's going through your mind in this, in this kind of match? Look, one place he hasn't really tested Chris yet is out to his wide forehand. I'd be directing the next couple of first attacks and first top spins in the rally over there. Try and get him out of balance. He's been solid on his backhand. And, and, and strange there, he had a couple of opportunities to go deep in the forehand, and he, and, he, 
and he almost let Chris back into the rally by playing directly on the backhand racket. You know, it's a lot of pressure out there, and to make the right decisions under pressure, that's gonna that's gonna be the key in this match. Dave Powell takes an 8-5 lead over Kane in the second set. Kane leads one set to love. Super placement there from Chris Yan, directly on the body of, uh, of Heming Hugh. And again, Heming's been too predictable here. That was an early pivot by Chris. It's just out of sorts, Heming. Not moving well. Lacking the confidence he had earlier in the tournament. Nick has come back against Xavier Dixon in this second last round. Now leads one set to love, 9-8. Uh, yeah. Chris running away way with the early part of this set. William, it's, it's, it's a tricky time and he's he uh, hemming you a signal for the timeout. So we might just stay on, on the line here and uh, go through the other matches on the timeout. Um, Dave has just taken that set, I believe, William. 11-5. So 11-5. Yep. Levels so. at one set apiece against Kane. Nick and Lum, Xavier Dixon, locked at nine all in the second set. Nick Lum leads one set to love. <laughs> Finn Lu leads Dominic playing two sets to love. And Ben Gould. One all leads 9-8 against Dylan Chambers. Incredible the amount of close six and seven set matches this week, this weekend, John. Yeah, absolutely. I just think it shows the, the strength and depth we have at the moment. Um, I think everyone came into this trials uh, prepared and in good shape. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a pleasure to see. Just to give you some information, Nick Lum takes a 2-0 lead against Xavier Dixon. Uh, as we go back to this live stream match. Just got all of the answers, Chris. I have really seen him as pumped up, engaged, motivated, jumping between points. Not really his natural style, but perhaps it should be more often with what we're seeing in this match. It's a demolition job. Yeah, absolutely. I think look, I think the same uh, when we played the o uh, Ocean Olympic team qualification, and we entrusted Chris to go on and take the match home. He was very vocal in that fifth game, and I think it got him over the line, 11-9 to fifth. So agree completely. I, I think uh, when he when he's like this, I think he brings his best table in his own. One of the first tom uh, pendulum serves we've seen Hemming do, and he got a, a weak return, played a reasonable first spin. Chris played a very good counter spin. I, th I, th I think he, he and he only brings it out at moments when the set's almost already over. I would like to see him start maybe the next set, more set up with the pendulum serve. Um, yes, I agree, Murph. Five set balls for Chris Yan. I'm sure he would like to put it away with this one and get on with the match. Good placement, I feel, off that backhand directly to the middle. We'll go for a short break. Chris Yan leads 3-0.
Okay, just to, just to uh, give you a little bit of background in this match, uh, Christian leading 3-0. Obviously, both players still have qualification in their own hands. Obviously, if Chris can close out this match, he will give himself a great chance going into the final round. Uh, William, I think we, we'd like to see some changes from the from the Hemming game uh, to try to get himself into this match. Yes, absolutely. And uh, it, it's not particularly evident what those changes need to be. So far, Chris has had an answer for everything, but Hemming must be probing different ways of playing here. We talked about the pendulum surf. Hopefully for Hemming, looks like he's shaping up for it here. No, he's... Yes, he is. That's good. Some different stuff. There we have it deep in the forehand, like you said. Um, I think that's it. That's an area he can expose uh, Chris, and, and I think he needs to he needs to direct a lot of his attacks yeah. and flicks into that area. There we see the second change of serve, and he's crept over into his forehand with the pendulum. Just changing things brings two fairly simple winning points. Now, he has not had that earlier in the match. Wonderful flick. Agile into the table and great execution, great technique from Christian. Just to go around the tables a little bit. Uh, Kane Townsend leading 7-3 in that third game against Dave Powell. Uh, Nick Lum, 2-0, 5-4 in front against Xavier Dixon. Finn Liu, good control on the set scoreboard, leading 2-0, but Dom firmly in that third game, leading 6-4. And Dylan Chambers battling away, 7-5 uh, up in this set against ben Benjamin Gould. As we go back here, 3-3. Oh, it's clever play from Hemming. A bit fortunate maybe to catch the edge there, but served an uh, unexpected serve and then followed it up confidently. It's what he's going to need to keep on forcing himself to do. That sloppy. Just seen that throughout the match. Chris has been first in and, and Hemming's just been unable to control that first ball. Oh, it's a difficult shot. Chris plays there. Digs it out of his middle backhand. That's high risk, high reward from Hemming. Left nothing out there on that flick down the line. Banana backhand flick. But I think it was directed to the area that we'd like to see him go to. You know, I think that's 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 brave but calculated. And that's the kind of shot you cannot afford to miss. Nick Lum, 2095 against Xavier Dixon. He's been very impressive uh, throughout this tournament. William, what's your thoughts on on, on, on Nick Lum? Oh, look, I've been hugely impressed by how he's carried himself, his game, his strengths. He's got some of those game strengths that bode very well for a good senior international career. You know, some real weapons, some real power there in his serve and first attack. Be greatly interested to follow his progress over the next few years. Chris definitely with all the answers here. William, he's just holding that extra ball on the table when, when, when Hemming does get in. Yeah, there's definitely been a shift of momentum this set, though. Hemming's done a lot of, a lot of good things, even on that last one. Oh, that's too good. That last point, Hemming positioned it well. It's just Chris. Chris is seeing the ball very well. Kane Townsend goes 2-1 ahead. I mean, that's set 11-7 against David Powell. Yeah, I feel that one maybe could go down the distance, uh, William. I, I, I see a cagey match there for both players. Yes, and every, every one of these matches is huge. 
Olympic spots on the line. Chance there from Hemming, I believe. A little bit higher received from Chris, and he just can't execute the backhand flick. Two points away from, from victory here, Chris Yan. Oh, that's good. Took the pace off that first attack. Just dropped down on Chris. To be fair, Chris hasn't missed many of them this match. It's been an exceptional performance against two of the best players in the land. Nick Lum goes three love up against Xavier Dixon. I think that just shows there the quality that Hemming's having to play at to win points here. But I do like the point before he took the pace off the ball. It dropped down on Chris. That one he's driving the pace up. You know, these are the variations and changes that we would have liked to have seen from Hemming in set two, not halfway through set four. Solid, solid play by Chris. Brings up his first match point. I think Hemming asked the questions there. He didn't do anything wrong, really. And Chris Yam was just able to answer them. This match is, ball here now. This is as well as I've ever seen Chris play this match. And there we have it. 4-0 win from Chris. Thoroughly deserved, William. Yeah, look, that's an exceptional performance. The first three sets, it wasn't even a, a contest. It was a demolition. It was only in the fourth set that Hemming really stood up, showed that he's one of the best players in the country, but Chris was just too strong. Yeah, I think uh, Hemming will have to regroup and get himself ready for the, for the, for the last round. Um, obviously, Chris March is on now and has qualification in his own hands. Um, we'll go on a short break. We, we may come back. Uh, to give you some updates shortly on the other tables. Uh, obviously, we don't have the live uh, stream footage, but we're going to try to give you some updates on the remaining four tables. Uh, William, what's happening out there? Uh, look, David Powell, Kane Townsend locked at four all in the fourth set. Kane leading two sets to one. Nicholas Lum powering ahead against Xavier Dixon. Three love, four three up. Finn Liu leading three games to love. Two love against Dominic Wang. And it's a nail-biter between young Ben Gould, Dylan Chambers, locked at two sets all, eight all in the fifth. Some exciting stuff out there, William. Just just anyone watching, any questions that you may have for William Hensale? Obviously, he's, he's with me here in the commentary box. And maybe a good chance to get some insight into your questions. Uh, so keep them coming. Critical match here for David Powell. Five all now against Kane Townsend. If he wins this one, he'll stay out in the lead. Seven wins and one loss. 
with only a couple of players breathing down his neck by the looks of things. In fact, if he wins this, Murph, I think there's a good chance that he'll have a lead that can't be caught. Absolutely, and giving, given the fact that, uh, that he, he, uh, he stayed unbeaten up to that 6-0 and he's only lost to Chris, yeah, I do believe if he wins this one, he, he will secure one of those elusive places. And I think for that to happen, Nick Lum will need to beat Xavier Dixon, but he goes ahead 4-7-4, four, four, three games to love, so looking a likely outcome. I have to say, looking at both Nicholas Lum and Finn Liu, who are only 14 and 15, they're probably finishing the tournament as strong as anybody. That certainly bodes well for the future. Oh, absolutely. And if you look back, going back to the last 20, 30 years in Australian table tennis, the players who have really come up and, and dominated at the senior level later in their careers, they have been competitive with the best seniors when they've been 14, 15 years old. And that's what we're seeing from some of these young guys from Finn and Nicholas. So it's a, another good sign that they're, they're destined to reach the very top of the game in Australia, at least if they continue working hard with also exciting opportunities on the world stage. Absolutely. Dave Powell is battling his way here in this set, leading 9-5. Dylan Chambers has gone three sets to two up against Ben Gould. Finn Liu coasting three love, 6-2 against Dominic Quang. David Powell now has four set points at 10-6 to draw level at two games apiece with Kane Townsend. He looks a little bit less composed than, than earlier in the tournament, uh, William I maybe he, he, he feels the, the what's at stake uh, looks a little bit anxious to me yeah look these tournaments are a, are a marathon there's so many ups and downs and as we've seen from Chris Yan had a couple of losses early on against some of the lower ranked players so early on you would have thought well gosh Chris is about to fall apart but he has fought back so well showing grit and determination very impressive. And now he is in the box seat to gain one of the Olympic single spots. It's interesting the format here. Back earlier in my career, it was generally multiple rounds of round robins and knockouts before you whittled your way down to get the final players. This year, just a single round robin. Perhaps a bit more pressure on every match because there's just fewer chances to come back in. Absolutely, I think it's a, it's a, it's a huge pressure on the players, but I think the players who come through this test are probably the most well equipped to have a good uh, performance at the Olympic Games. And I think history would show in the uh, the old formats where there were multiple different round robins and knockouts that it's generally the players who were in those top positions after the first round of it that stayed there for the rest of the tournament. So can't disagree with that, John. Finn Liu wraps up his match against Dominic Wang in really impressive fashion there, uh, William. Yes, 4-0. And uh, Nick Lum, three match points. 10-7, three games to love against Xavier Dixon. Flicks into the net and Nick has taken a 4-0 victory. That does not bode well for Xavier's chances of making those top two spots. Really puts Chris and uh, Powell in the box seats. I'd have to say Chris has um, deserved the position he's in. He's really been very impressive against David Powell and, and Hemming, who took them both down 4-0, easy as you like. Really weren't matches. See, 
Dylan Chambers leads three sets to two. Five all against Ben Gould. David Power takes an early lead, two games each, two points to one up. Power goes 3-1 up. Starting to get get the grips of this match. I feel I think he he will he will sense this fifth game being very important. I think Kane would be one of the players who's maybe a bit disappointed in his performance during this event. Certainly one of the one of the players expected to challenge for the Olympic spots maybe wasn't a favourite to get in the top two, but on the very periphery of those top two players. Absolutely, William. I think he he, he probably his his Saturday having a zero four on Saturday was probably where it went wrong for him. He was still very much in the hunt on after day one where he won two matches and lost one. So yeah, he would be disappointed, but I have to say very impressed how he's come back out today and you know fought even though he, he qualification isn't isn't possible for him yeah you wouldn't see on his uh behavior and attitude that he's out of the running for the top two spots absolutely not and he, he has a big big say in this tournament he goes on to play christian after this so it could be kane who, who decides a lot of, a lot of the things that happen uh, throughout the course of this afternoon yeah, matched evenly two sets all four all this fifth set. Dylan Chambers up 9 7, three sets to two. Murph has just done some quick calculations of the the standings here, and gosh, it's oh, I don't remember a qualification, qualification tournament being this close ever before with so many possibilities and outcomes. Got Chris Yan on six wins and two losses, three players being Hemming Hu. Nick Lum and Xavier Dixon, five wins and three losses. And David Power will either be at 6-2 or 7-1, depending on the outcome. If he wins this match, he is guaranteed one of the top two spots. But if he loses this match to Kane, it's all back in there. Interestingly, Murph is just pointing out here, Nick Lum is still in the running. Astonishingly, so many chances to come back for these guys, given how the results have fallen. What's your pick from here, Murph? Yeah, I, I think uh, Chris Yan with 6-2 in the bank and, and, and sitting in the practice hall is probably the favourite at the moment uh, to take one of the spots. Um, still very much in Dave Pell's hands as well. He can, he can go out to 7-1 if he can get over the line here against Kane Townsend. So I'd say both Chris and, and Dave still firmly in the box seats. But players like Nick Lum, like... Hemming Hugh, like Xavier Dixon, not completely out of it when you would have thought with three losses it yeah. would have been. Yeah, I can't think of any other years where, you know, almost having an even record before the last round would be enough to still be in contention for one of the Olympic spots. And, of course, if there are multiple players on the same amounts of wins and losses after all the matches have been played out, then it goes down to the results between those players who have got the same number of wins and losses. And <laughs> they've all been beating each other and losing to each other. So it'll be a fascinating to work out exactly who comes out on top. So uh, just looking at the next round of matches um, for the men's, uh, Nick Lum will take on Benjamin Gould. Dave Powell, Hugh Hemming, Kane Townsend, Chris Yan, Xavier Dixon, Finn Liu, and Dylan Chambers against Dominic Wang. So a lot of the players who are in the hunt playing against each other. So all to play for. Kane getting the upper hand in this fifth set, leading 9-5. He's played exceptional table tennis in this fifth set. Found the form that deserted him yesterday. And 
we're down to a seventh deciding set between Dylan Chambers, Ben Gould. Ben Gould winning that sixth set, 12 points to 10. Kane now leading 10-6 in the fifth, four set points to take a 3-2 lead. There it is, 11-6 to Kane in the fifth set. Now leading three games to two. I think you're right, William. I think we've seen it. We've seen the real Kane, Kane Townsend here this morning. Um, you know, he's serving well. He's looking for his forehand. He's not playing too hard all the time. He's sometimes playing spinny balls with his forehand, and I feel that's when he plays his best table tennis. And we'll, we'll, st we'll stay on the line for the, for the remainder of this match. Obviously, a crucial match in this qualification event. Yeah, gosh, there's some tough matches coming up in the next round, the final round this afternoon. Chris will take on Kane. Hemming taking on Dave Powell. Xavier playing Finn Lu. Nick playing Ben Gould. So typically at the end of a, a long tournament like this, it comes down to those matches between each other where the top players are playing at the end. It's generally between only a couple of matches where it still has a bearing on the final outcome. But this is completely different. Got four of the five tables will have a direct outcome on who gets those two Olympic single spots. And don't forget, we also have the final women's round coming up. Uh, with the final women's round coming up uh, just after the conclusion of this uh, men's round. And again, William, very, all to play for over there as well. We have Jan Fang Lei and Michelle Bromley locked at 7-1 apiece. And they're playing each other in the final round. So the winner of that contest will secure their place at the 2020 Olympic Games. Um, but there's some other some other possibilities for, for players. Melissa, Melissa Tapper on 6-2 on and... Trace, uh, Stephanie Feng on 6-2 also have big possibilities to, uh, to, to stake a claim. Um, so some interesting matches in yeah, that female side. Way. You, you, had the, that you commentated on the last female match. Michelle Bromley was very impressive, I thought, against uh, Melissa Tapper. Very solid play from uh, Michelle Bromley. She's really tightened up her, her intensity her, her grittiness and her ability to control the open kind of rallying game through the middle of the table. Got compact, fast technique. She's moving really well. Melissa Tapper just wasn't able to, to get her moving and get her out of position. Looked a little unsettled today, Melissa. Didn't quite have the confidence, trust and belief in her shots. I know from personal experience when you're not feeling confident and comfortable it can be can be tough to make those changes get stuck in a rut hard to break yourself out of Dave Powell making a good start here it's up 3-1 Kane pegs one back to 3-2 Powell of course trailing three games to two some uh, some interesting women's scenarios from Glenn Tepper on on the social media there if if, if you want to take a read uh, I think it just shows in depth what can still happen here in, in uh, throughout the afternoon but definitely worth a read thanks for your insight Glenn obviously Glenn doing great work for the ITTF over the years, former CEO, and now also doing some great work with the Asian Table Tennis Union. Great stuff, Glenn. Yeah, some great analysis by Glenn Tepper there. Thanks, Glenn, for sending that through. If I'm reading this correctly, Jan Fang Lei is 
in the box seat right now. Michelle likely looking second, second best, but quite possibly that we're going to have a three-way count back. So of course, as Glenn points out, it's only the matches between the players that have the same amount of wins and losses that are taken into account, how they've gone against each other. You remove all the other results. Dave, Dave very gritty here. Yeah. Leading 7-2, leading trying to get this match down to the 7th set. It looks like it's going that way. 2-8, Kane Towns end to serve. Yeah, the summary from Glenn Tepper. I'm just reading down what is a, a thorough analysis. Jan Fangley really has to beat Michelle in the final match to qualify, as all countbacks are against her if Michelle does beat her. Fascinating. And that's, I think, what we've consistently seen from both the men's and the women's. How many close matches where players have beaten each other and lost her to others. Aggressive from Dave. Trying to get some video up here of Dave Powell against Kane Townsend. Got our mobile camera lady. Excellent. We are online here. Fantastic that we could get that up and working for the viewers online. There we have it. We're going down to the seventh set here, William. What's your what's your thoughts? You've been in this position, I'm sure, knowing how important it is. Look, you'd have to back Powell in this situation. He's had one big hiccup yesterday against Christian, where he was completely out of sorts and didn't look like he came out ready to play and ready to win. But apart from that, he's been impressive earlier. He's been stable, consistent, getting the job done any way he's needed to. Whereas Kane had a, had a shocker yesterday, obviously 0-4. He's recovered well. I think Powell will just have that weight of having beaten Kane in other big matches in the past. That slight mental advantage. And of course, his Olympic spot on the line to play for. Interesting note here, uh, William, and interesting to hear your thoughts. Neither player with a corner man. Both opted to coach themselves. Advantage, disadvantage. Uh, how, oh. how was it for you when you were out there playing? Did you prefer a coach? Did you prefer your own thoughts? Look, I like to have a, a coach on the bench. And, you know, outsiders see things differently. It's like two people can hear the same conversation but have very different takeouts from it. And I think it's the same thing with table tennis. The way the player experiences it and that the limitations and the opportunities they see are going to be different from someone who's sitting outside looking in without that emotion, without the adrenaline running through their, through their veins. So I would have liked to have seen a coach on the bench for, for both of these players. So here we go. That's not a good enough receive by Dave Powell. It's a short topspin serve. I think that was Probably going to be dropping off the end. Hal rushed in, tried to push it short. Easy put away from Kane. Oh, tentative start from both players. Hal tries to go with a short push one more time. Drifts long, but Kane's already stepped in to push it. Could have had a crack at that one, a swing. Start from both players here. Kane's been just getting that forehand uh, in on, on, on his forehand pivot, uh, William. It's something he hasn't been doing throughout this competition, but I think he's very dangerous in that position. And I think Powell will drop 
a wide one to the forehand. Could be on the receiver. Could be on the first open on these next two points. There we see it. Yeah. He set himself up with the receive there. He didn't let he didn't let Kane attack first and and really good body to get around and play that heavy spin out of the forehand. Yeah. It's high risk, high reward playing short against Kane. He's got good short top spin serves and a good attack over the table. Well, that's a costly fault there. Powell pulls ahead for two in this deciding seventh game. Mini break for Dave here, William. Yes, uh, I think he'll, if he wins this next one, I think he'll streak away with an early, with a straightforward victory here in the seventh set. I think this is a, a must-win point for Kane. Yeah, tentative play from Powell. It was a decent short push, but Powell really didn't do anything with his counter push. Can't afford to give Kane time for his big heavy first attack. Mini break save by Kane, he's back in, 4-4. Four, four. I feel like Dave he just needs to get 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 concentrated on every point, every ball. Try to make the best possibility from 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 each opportunity. There we see a bit of a lack of discipline from Kane. He can put in some showy shots like that, where he the backwards crossover with his foot feet, <laughs> with his footwork, and just took a swing, no long, no look swing at it. I think Powell's doing the right thing here tactically, trying to play deep to the backhand or deep to the forehand, making Kane make his mind up beforehand. There oh, it's go. sharp by Powell to be on top of that one. I have to say, William, his half long throughout this whole competition has been first class. He, he, he's, he's watched those serves, watched those receives, and he's been first in against most of his opponents. Opportunity there for Dave. Popped up receive and just didn't get, didn't get behind that flick. Yeah, I'll be disappointed with that golden opportunity to take a 7-4 lead. Ah, oh, quality backhand topspin by Powell. Stayed low over the net. He's taking his time, Dave. He's, he doesn't want to rush this. He wants to be sure of every ball. Probably a smart move. Kane, Kane likes to get on, get on with the rallies quick enough, and he's, he's, he, he's dictating the time and dictating the, the, the speed of this match. Just clipped the top of the net on the way through there, pal. Millimeters in this match. Fortunate to get away with that from Powell. That is a bread and butter shot for Kane normally. Does that very well where the ball just pops up a little high and he pivots. Comes over the table with his forehand attack. I just think he got enough spin on it that it was a difficult, difficult opportunity for Kane. He didn't didn't quite 
get the spin that he needed to play down the line there. Well, five match points for David Powell to take a unbeatable lead, qualify for the Olympics for the singles. Yeah, m massive moment for Dave Powell. Um, obviously already played in uh, numerous Commonwealth Games and, and the Rio Olympics, but I think should he qualify for, for Tokyo to be one of his one of his greatest achievements, William. Absolutely. Wonderful. He's done it. Dave. I think he's probably been the most consistent performer, William, throughout this competition and probably deserves to be the first player to qualify. Look, apart from his blip yesterday against Christian, he has been consistent, stable, really a, a, a step above the rest of the competition here. So great to see him hold his nerve, take the first singles qualification spot. I think, as you mentioned there, John, now he's been working full time as school teacher and trying to fit table tennis in around that. Very difficult thing to do and typically Australian players who have been at the, the top and played overseas internationally typically coming back and working full time and still trying to play at the very highest level only last a few years but he has pressed through and uh, great to see him get a re reward for that hard work. Absolutely, couldn't be happier for one of my national team players who is a great role model and like I said you know, he's put, a, he's put a great shift in in the last 18 months to, to, to get this qualification. We're going to go on a short break. Uh, thank you to William Hensel. Some absolute uh, great commentary and great insight into Australian table tennis and how the players are thinking. Thank you, William. Uh, we'll be back with the last round of the women's shortly. Anderson, get over Anderson, 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 Ander